Alright, all you zombie shooting cop police force members out there, welcome back to the Indie Radio Arcade. And as a little bit of a heads up for next week's show, folks, we will feature another classic horror movie to kick off the month of instant classicness that actually got lost out on a coin toss. And as a little hint, it's Nightmare on Elm Street, the original one with Johnny Depp. So that should be fun. And besides that fun that will take place during the month of instant classicness, I think it's time for us to go into an instant classic video game review like no other for another edition of the instant classic video game review. And the game we have up on the plate, ladies and gentlemen, is a game close to my horrifying heart, none other than Resident Evil 2. And the only reason we were able to get away with this game, folks, is we remembered that we played this game for the N64, which is perfect in line for all of the creepy N64 milestone games that we usually play. So, the meat and potatoes of this said game is that one day, Officer Leon S. Kennedy, along with Claire Redfield, who was in town looking for her brother, Leon would be there to start his first day on the police force only to realize that there was something horrifying going on in the city of Raccoon City. And yeah, <laughs> that's the best way to explain the meat and potatoes for Leon and his start of becoming an albatross in the life of anybody he comes across along with Claire Redfield. Cause for those who don't know, there are albatrosses which means that anybody that comes across their path will die a horrifying death. It's sad, but it's true. And with that properly explained and my sister probably laughing somewhere out there because of the comment I made, because she knows it's true too, what did I like about this game? Well, the music straight off the bat was something that I truly loved about this game that definitely set the atmosphere of this town going straight to hell thanks to zombies and other creatures that try to attack you at every turn. And another thing that I loved about this game is the different variety of weapons that you get a chance to use from not only a 9mm, a modified version of it, and I do believe they did have the Matilda in that game, not too entirely sure if it was featured in the original, but I'm pretty sure it was from the N64 version that I played. Also, you get a chance to use a rocket launcher, a shotgun, yes, and not only that, but a grenade launcher as well to take out a multitude of different enemies that would try to take you out during this very game. Another thing that I loved about this game as well is the fact that you get a chance to get different costumes if you're able to beat this game in a certain amount of time. And I would like to thank all the speedrunners who played this game at least a thousand and one times to help me actually unlock those set costumes for the game many years later. And of course, the other thing that I loved about this game was the story of this game itself. Of how a town due to so many things that are happening underneath your toes to go wrong to cause this town to go to hell in less than a month? Very cool. I don't know why, but it gives me a real Night of the Living Dead slash um, House of the Dead feel to it as well. I couldn't think of the other zombie movie where things would go to hell in less than 24 hours, but it, this is what this reminds me of. And with everything that I liked about this game, what didn't I like about this game? Well, even though a lot of people did like the part where you get a chance to be Sherry during this game, I didn't really didn't like being Sherry during this game. Another thing that I didn't like about this game because my arachnophobia is the spiders involved in this said game. And along with that, we might as well add in the fact that you get chased around by Mr. X throughout the duration of this game. Really didn't like that either, especially with the fact that I tried to shoot him and he still kept coming after me. 
and this was before I learned that he was an invincible tank and if you shoot him you will have to you know run from him afterwards so yeah that was a beginner mistake on my behalf but still don't like it and another thing and last but not least that I didn't like about this game even though a lot of the classic Resident Evil fans are used to it is the tank controls that are involved with this game because in some certain situations only being able to run like you're in a um I would say like the music video from OK Go when they were on the treadmills yeah that tends to be bad really does and it does come back to bite you during certain bosses, especially when you're fighting that giant mutant in the basement. And with everything that I liked and didn't like about this game, and oh wait, one thing that we did like about this game that we completely forgot to mention is the fact that they had a mercenaries mode in this game, which involves you going through a gauntlet of every single enemy from the basement going upward that I think is called Agent Hunk. Not too entirely sure it might have changed from the remake version of Resident Evil, but I still like that mode. And now with everything that we liked and didn't like about this game, what do I think they could do to improve upon it? Well, besides the controls that they have that were the tank controls to try to actually move around in this game, maybe a chance to actually dodge the enemies, or even better, a chance to actually use a weapon to take out the enemies just in case they bite you during mid-combat. Maybe something along the lines of a knife or something. Yeah, that would be helpful. And oh, another thing that I wish they could add to this game is a special takedown attack for the zombies as well if you're able to sneak up behind them to instantly take them out as well. Maybe something like that in the near future. And oh, also besides that, a chance for you to have a two-player mercenary speedrun mode to see who can make it to the end the fastest. Another thing that I hope to see in this game in the near future. And seeing the fact that we don't know how to review games along the lines of gold stars, coins, letters of bricks, we review the game in only two ways. Will there be a video game story in the near future for this game? And do we recommend this game for you, the Resident Evil fan at home? Well, since this game was the first video game story that we told when we first started Music Village Up, yes, there will be a video game story in the near future for this game. And I think it'll have to do with that giant alligator that I had to fight during one of the levels. Neither that or my one big fight that I had with that giant blob in the basement. Either way, it's gonna involve some giant oversized boss fight, and to keep up with my promise that we said before a long time ago, we may try to fit a Tales from the Disc in there as well for you horror fans out there. Not sure how we're gonna do it after these many years, but we'll find a way, we'll find a way. And do we recommend this game for you, the horrifying Resident Evil fan at home? Well, if you want to be a cop or a sister of a cop that tries to go into a town to not only find out what happened, but try to escape before it all goes to hell and explode in a fiery explosion of zombies, mutants, spiders, and anything else that I got a feeling that Dexter's lab cooked up in the middle of the night, then I recommend you go out there and cop that disc. And beware and prepare to be scared. And that's the nine-year-old in me saying that because I was terrified in this game when I was a little kid. And with that said, folks, I think it's time for us to head back to this music. And when we return, we'll be back with the returning Flash Mania as the Indie Radio Arcade continues right after a word from our sponsors. So don't run out of quarters just yet, folks, and stay tuned. 